everyone knows who you are in New Zealand. Everyone would know who Buck is. Oh man, I'm, I'm a boy. Yeah. I'm a boy, man. Yeah, he's okay. up on that level. Wow. That's why I. That's why I liked. Um, mm. That's why I wanted to play series because Buck was playing. Right. And Zinni was playing. Right. And Mark Brook out, and he was another Maori loose forward, mm. and a big Tonga fellow, Mosi Koloto. Right. And uh, they played the year before I, my mm. first year. Right. And I was like, oh man, they, that. they were just bashing people, you yeah. know. But a lot of freedom, you know, yeah, to run the right. And how was Buck as a sevens? Yeah, no, good man. Good? Yeah, yeah, good man. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, yeah. He, well, he played to his strengths. Yes, that's you know, right. He would be running here and everywhere. Yeah. New Zealand made it a physical game. Yeah. Okay. Just bashed it up, bashed it up. Take two guys and then he'd pop it off and the right. guys would start running. Yeah, so they'd, they'd do it right today, man. Yeah? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd bash guys into submission. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I played with both Zinni and... Oh, and, okay. and Zinni, Zinni was an awesome yeah. player. Man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Myers, he's, he's the second best. Right, okay. But, you know, for me, Buck was, uh, he was a great player, but the captaincy too, you know, he just, yeah. man, he just made you, made you want to put your body on the line, you know. When I first played for the Māori team, it was my first ever New Zealand team. Right. And we had the trial with North Island versus South Island. And I was a young fella, number seven, and he was number eight. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't say anything to me, you know. <laughs> And then they, uh, in the changing room before the game, all he said to me was, if I beat you to any rucks, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> oh man, I was, I was scared, man, because I thought you would kick my ass right on the field. Tough guy. Oh man. Yeah. And in that game, I got kicked in the head, and a big cut, a big cut in my head, and blood everywhere. He comes over, yeah. and says, I've got a photo at home, he's looking at my head. Which is a bloody grass bird, mate. Get him! Yeah, oh, sugar, get him! He's too scared not to try that, you know? Yeah, I mean, awesome, mate. Yeah, okay. So you think he might have been the best number eight, eh? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, that is, well, that's yeah. okay. Your best moment in the sevens, what would you say what, what that moment was? Uh, best moment for, for, for any New Zealand rugby player, and I guess for any uh, player who's represented their country, is your first game. It's always the best moment, but uh, you know, close on the heels was you know winning a Hong Kong is, especially back in the days when you know we're playing against Sirevi and all those boys. That's the restart. Eric Rush, the referee decided it was over the 10 meters line. Rush out there to Pierce. Pierce is home. Scott Pierce's third try of the tournament, and uh, it couldn't have come at a better time for New Zealand. The flags raised. It was Eric Rush with that sizzling acceleration of his again, caught by Serevi. But Pierce was up, he burst an Andruku tackle, and he was home. Good score. Yeah, those, uh, those are big, big games, you know, and to me, rugby didn't get too much better than that. You know, it's, it's 20 minutes, which doesn't sound like a long time, but it's just 100 miles an hour, and, you know, your lungs are screaming, and the body's aching, and... Uh, it's just full on, and to me, it's about as good as, as Seven Scott playing in those Hong Kong finals. Excellent. But the uh, yeah, Commonwealth Games, yeah, Commonwealth yeah. Games, obviously yeah. winning those gold medals, and, and uh, you know we were lucky we won two, and uh, the boys have won another two since then. So uh, you know New Zealand's had a great run at the Commonwealth Games, but we'll lose one one day. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. sure, <laughs> and hopefully to Fiji. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> probably the team that will uh, uh, tip us over, you know. Mm. But you haven't seen that, England's a lot better nowadays, Australia's a lot better, Samoa, you know. Tonga's a team that can trip you up at any stage, and uh, you know, South Africa, obviously. Yeah. Now, um, do, you, do you feel that uh, from the time you're playing, obviously, today, has Sevens got a, a, a far bigger audience now than it used to have, what do you feel? Yeah, I think it's yeah, definitely a bigger audience, because uh, when we, when I first started in 88, Played Hong Kong and Sydney, and that was it for the year. That was the New Zealand Sevens program I was done. Uh, but now, you know, when the circuit started, you had all these different destinations, and uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a world circuit. So, uh, yeah, obviously, the audience is big. I don't think the, change, the game's changed too much, to be honest. You know, watching the, the Wellington Sevens the other week, you know, it wasn't, wasn't that much different from what we did. Okay. Any standout players you saw uh, just in recent times? Um, yeah, I think uh, a couple of the South African players are pretty good. Uh, obviously, there's a couple of good boys. Um, Frankie Halai from New Zealand had an outstanding tournament. And I thought Tomasi Tama, you know, he's, he's to me, I always thought Serevi and 
Masio Rauma were two of the better or two of the best Fijian players. Uh, but now he's right up there with those two, I reckon. He's uh, you know he can control the game and he's uh, he's won a few tournaments for New Zealand in the last last year or so. So to me, he's getting right up to that that sort of level. That's a big compliment. I'm sure. mm -hmm. Now, when when like um, I remember you telling us that. Your, about your first incident about meeting a Fijian boy. Yeah? <laughs> Tell us about that old rugby player, so. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was uh, at the Hong Kong Sevens and uh, I was rooming with, uh, I think it might have been Joeli Vendiri. Um, yeah, Paula Bale was the first uh, Fijian. Okay, tell us about Paula Bale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we got into the hotel and, because uh, the Canada, we got so he's quite religious and the Fijian people are religious. And, Says it's crazy, they're not grace. And I thought, oh, that's cool. And we got up to the room, and uh, he started unpacking the suitcase. And I said, oh, that's cool. And he started folding his clothes up. Oh, very neat. Yeah, I thought, oh man, this is real discipline, you know, this is really cool. And then, as soon as all the clothes were folded up, put it in the drawers. And I was like, oh, man, this guy's, uh, you know, good church boy. Good church boy. <laughs> And as soon as the suitcase was empty, all the hotel stuff started going in the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> the towels and the slippers and the hangers. <laughs> was, oh my gosh, you know. So yeah, that was the first time I come across one of the Fijian boys. Uh, how could they improve the little bits in the stand? <laughs> uh, you know, my next roommate was Joe Ali Vendiri. He was worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of Joe Ali, how is he doing that? Yeah, you know, he's doing well, but he's a sick, he's a sick man. He's, uh, you know, got the diabetes and you know, he's, he's on the transplant. Waiting list over here, but I believe he's got a, a, a special blood type, so you know it's not easy to find a donor for him. So, uh, but he's, uh, he's still the same fella. Every time you see him, got the big smile. Yeah, I'm sure. Keeps telling me how fast he was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure.